the county executive has said that businesses are coming back to Westchester. They're not only staying here, they're coming here. And he said that that is because he's improved the tax environment. However, you say that we need to further uh, entice businesses by cutting red tape, mm -hmm. by making the process for site plans and applications more streamlined. How do you propose to do that? What would you specifically do to streamline the application process for new and potential businesses? Uh, it's vital that we have a competitive region economically. We need job creation in order to create opportunities for upward mobility, in order to provide for investment in our urban centers, in order to have a stronger commercial tax base that can help reduce the burden that's imposed on homeowners. And I don't think it's enough simply to offer tax incentives or low-cost financing for particular deals, which is what the county executive chiefly talks about. Although that's part of the job, and you do want to be competitive uh, when you're thinking about landing major commercial anchors. Uh, but think about it. The number of transactions in which the government is directly engaged will always be dwarfed by the number that occur on a purely private basis. And so what really matters big picture and long term is, number one, the fabric of our land use regulations. And here the county can be helping with model zoning codes, assistance with comprehensive plans, assistance with generic environmental impact statements, which accomplish just what you said a moment ago. And that is reducing the obstacles to investment in areas where it, we're reinforcing regional planning goals, and at the same time, preserving open space and preventing overgrowth in areas where we really want to preserve the existing character. So that's one. Two, how we use our capital and infrastructure budget, which ought to be rethought so that we're not just replacing depreciated assets, but actually making strategic investments that can unlock the economic potential of particular areas. And we've got to think about the skills and preparation of our population. Do we have employees that are ready for and can serve as magnets for the jobs of the future? If you speak to large commercial landlords or big businesses and ask, what is it going to take to locate here in Westchester? Very often the first question they're going to ask is, where are my employees going to live and how are they going to get to work? And if we don't have a good answer to that question, then we really don't have an economic strategy that's going to pay dividends down the road. Uh, and in terms of the statistics over the last couple of years, look, let's keep in mind um, the county executive took office in the midst of the worst national recession since the Great Depression. So of course things have improved to some degree since then. I think attributing that to county policymaking um, really flies in the face of common sense. The question for us now is, are we adopting policies and laying a foundation that will provide for sustainable smart growth in the future? And by that standard, I think this administration has really dropped the ball terribly, and there's a lot more we can be doing. And you said taking credit for the economic upturn and the positive outlook, of at least the better outlook that we have now, is like taking credit for the sunshine or the sunrise. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that the county executive has some credit due to him for keeping the tax levy at zero and even reducing it by 2%? No, actually I, I, I don't. And I think to some degree that's, that, that supposed accomplishment is really an illusion. Uh, number one, uh, the county executive actually vetoed the budget that cut taxes by 2%. Uh, it was adopted over his override, and uh, rather it was overridden by the legislature over his veto. Um, and how was that accomplished anyway, in terms of the county executive's actions? It was by borrowing tens of millions of dollars to cover the county's operations, pension costs, uh, certiorari costs. You know, if you want me to borrow to cover operations, I'll give you as big a tax cut as you want, and it'll feel good for a little while, yeah. and then it'll feel an awful lot worse, because it only intensifies budget pressures down the road. And the big point, just coming back to what we were discussing earlier, is that looking at the county's portion of the bill in isolation is not a sensible way to evaluate our tax challenges. Because if the county is saving $1, but in so doing imposing $5 or $10 of costs on municipalities and school districts that all of us pay for, that's not doing the taxpayers any favors. So we really do need a more comprehensive approach to how we look at these challenges. And there are other examples of that, too. Um, in which the county executive will sell something as a reduction when, in fact, he's only increasing cost. And if you look, for example, at human services and the reductions that have occurred in child care, well, why do people need child care? So that they can hold on to a job and be self-sufficient and independent and provide for their families and communities. So the effect of the child care cuts has been to greatly reduce the number of families who are able to afford quality child care in Westchester. That's meant that more families have ended up on welfare instead, 
which we all pay for. And it's meant that many children are showing up at kindergarten less prepared to learn, which means we're paying more for services through the public school systems, K through 12. So uh, not only cruel and unfair in the direct impact on working parents who really need some help, but also profoundly self-defeating, just from a fiscal perspective, because it costs all of us a lot more. So we've got to be smarter about the choices that we make and ensure that we're using our scarce resources in a way that really benefits the people and taxpayers of Westchester. And I'm glad you mentioned borrowing, because that's been something that you've said to the county executive in your previous two debates, that he's borrowed to kind of prop up the budget to yep. keep his tax levy at zero percent. How would you uh, approach the budget? Would you raise taxes? Well, my commitment is to stay within the property tax cap of 2% a year that was uh, adopted by the state, to have a sound economic development strategy, as we've been discussing, which will improve the commercial tax base and reduce the burden on homeowners, to share services, so we're looking at the totality of our tax bill, uh, and to make sure that we're evaluating our costs and benefits in a careful and sensible way. And I must say that in New Rochelle, We've demonstrated uh, over the time that I've been mayor and a member of the city council that we respect every penny that comes to us from taxpayers. Uh, we have today the lowest municipal tax rate of the large comparable cities in Westchester County. And during the time that I've been in office, the rate of change in taxes has been the lowest of those same comparable cities. Uh, we've saved millions of dollars by um, uh, canceling non-essential programs, by uh, reducing the size of our workforce by attrition so that we have a lean, uh, efficient team working for us, by refinancing debt to take advantage of low interest rates, by cutting energy use. So a variety of steps um, that have enabled us to, to run a, a tight ship. And I would certainly apply those principles to the county as well. And I think there's a lot we can be doing to make ourselves more efficient. The same shared service concept that we talked about with respect to multiple municipalities can also be employed internally among different departments. Uh, groups like the Department of Social Services are too siloed. There's not enough communication between divisions. And using technology and really a change in organizational culture uh, could help every worker be more productive and also provide a higher quality of service. So I take those things very, very seriously. And I want us to get beyond slogans and beyond simplistic solutions and really embrace plans that make sense and that uh, can get to the goal that all of us share of a thriving region that's affordable and uh, that does not drive seniors uh, out with high tax rates, does not prevent young people from moving in, does not serve as an impediment to the business investment that we know is important to all of us. So can I take that as a no? Yeah. <laughs> what was the original question? <laughs> I don't even remember. But <laughs> Raising taxes. Uh, I, I think we've got to stick to the tax cap at the county level mm -hmm. and then have a strategy for dealing with the overall tax bill. That's what my commitment is. And the number 109 has been thrown out a lot by your opponent, who mm -hmm. has said that you've raised taxes by that much over your span of 18 years on the New York, New York Shell City Council, which equates, I guess, to 6 or 7% a year. Actually, it equates to a lot less than that, because when you talk about compound interest or compound calculations, which is the right way to calculate it, it's more like 4%. But the point I'd make is the same one I made just a moment ago. That's a, a classic example of a statistic taken out of context in order to create a misleading impression. Because if you look at that exact same period of time in all the comparable cities of Westchester and Yonkers and in Mount Vernon and in White Plains, you will find that the rate of increase in New Rochelle was actually the lowest of all those cities. But it's still an increase, and Astorino would say that it's still unacceptable. Well, and when he was a member of the Mount Pleasant Town Board, he increased taxes. And when he was a member of the Mount, Vernon, uh, Mount uh, Pleasant School Board, he increased taxes. So uh, all of these issues, I think, have to be evaluated in context. And when you do look at that in context and look at the whole truth, uh, what's clear is that my record in New Rochelle is one of respect for taxpayers. And my plan, what I'm offering in terms of the future of Westchester, is much more likely to make a difference in terms of what we pay for public services uh, than, uh, than the rather simplistic solutions that Mr. Astorino has offered. And to kind of focus on Northern Westchester, a specific, a specific example that I think highlights the housing settlement and the, your difference with the county executive. In Lewisboro recently, uh, I guess they were given $1 million in 2001 to build affordable, or they were given $1 million to build uh, public parks and in return they were asked to commit to build affordable housing. Since 2001, they have not done that. Mm -hmm. And recently, the county decided 
to work with them to identify locations to find places to build affordable housing. Lewisboro has said that most of their property is on New York City watershed and therefore cannot support affordable housing and multiplexes. How would you handle the, the situation there with Lewisboro? Well, would you work cooperatively, cooperatively with them? Would you demand that they build? I would work housing? cooperatively with Lewisboro and any other community that was affected by um, the housing settlement or other issues related to housing. I think that's the responsibility of the county to act as a constructive partner with municipalities. And I think the general subject, uh, beyond Lewisboro, but including Lewisboro, of the affordable housing settlement with the federal government has been badly mishandled by this administration in a way that has unnecessarily prolonged a divisive dispute by a period of years, and which is costing us $20 million in counting in withheld federal grants and in unnecessary legal expenses. Uh, and I say that recognizing that reasonable people can disagree about the housing settlement, and I have my own problems with the way the federal government has handled this, particularly in the early years, when I don't think they demonstrated a sufficient understanding of the structure of home rule in Westchester, or about things, just as you mentioned, uh, watershed uh, restrictions that do impact a great deal of northern Westchester. I think there's a better understanding now. But the point is, the way to solve this issue and get it behind us is through a constructive, collaborative relationship that brings together federal, local, county uh, officials and uh, tries to decide how are we going to knock down the remaining barriers that exist towards uh, resolving the settlement requirements. What the county executive has done instead is assume a kind of obstructionist defiant posture, which has not in any way advanced the interests of Lewisboro or any other community, which as I said a moment ago has been very costly to every taxpayer and resident uh, of Westchester, um, and which has failed to get the job done. I mean, the problem is not that he's fighting. The problem is that he's fighting and losing. And what we need is a, a winning strategy that will instead um, uh, get this over with and, uh, and move this sort of expensive, divisive mess uh, into the past.